Welcome back to an epic episode of Nuclear News. Let's dive right in. First off, price action. The Sprott Urator Miners ETF was down 6.71% on the week. The broader stock market, NASDAQ down 3% on the week. Let's compare the long-term chart of the Sprott Urator Miners ETF. Since 2020, it's up about 140%. Since 2020, the NASDAQ is uh, much less than that. We still have long-term outperformance, short-term underperformance. The macroeconomic environment is terrible for any asset, no matter how good it is. That's just the nature of the beast when they're spiking interest rates. So instead of worrying about short-term price action, we focus on long-term fundamentals. So let's dive through exactly what is going on with this market. To start, we have this. Uranium needs $80 per pound incentive to meet demand this decade. And right now, a pound of uranium costs $51. This comes from Brandon Monroe, the CEO of Bannerman Energy. He said today a price of $80 per pound would be needed to satisfy demand out to 2030, following on from warnings from uranium experts that utilities who have not invested in new supply could be caught out like lithium converters amid the current electric vehicle boom. And so this speaks to the ongoing supply deficit for above ground uranium supply. So let's dive through the demand side. Well, we know the US government is doing everything in its power to prop up this space and to prop up nuclear power and to proliferate it throughout the world for decades to come. Five ways the Biden Department of Energy is spending big on nuclear energy. They are funding advanced and theoretical research. One grant announced on Wednesday will pay $12 million to fund scientists across America's national laboratories. They work on advanced research into problems at the edges of our understanding of nuclear physics. They're training nuclear engineers. The Energy Department is also funding universities to educate the next generation nuclear security workforce. They're keeping old plants online. The infrastructure legislation passed into law earlier this year contains $6 billion in civil nuclear credits to keep online nuclear plants that would otherwise be replaced with fossil fuel infrastructure. They're building nuclear fuel supply chains. The Energy Department is putting $150 million into producing nuclear fuel essential to advanced reactors. And they are catching up on fusion. The Energy Department in October announced $47 million for energy into fusion, the process by which stars like our sun create energy. And so fusion is many, many decades away, but we're staying on top of it because it will be a competitor in theory to fission, right? Now, fusion is still theoretical. What's concrete is the burgeoning nuclear renaissance that's occurring right now. This comes from the Office of Nuclear Energy. Coal to nuclear, a recent energy report finds hundreds of U.S. coal power plant sites could be converted into nuclear power plants. And so they want the world to run on uranium fuel. That's the goal here. So let's focus on what is going on around the world. Every single week, we have new developments, new countries moving further into this space. The global nuclear renaissance is occurring before our very eyes. So let's go through this week's headlines. India's power giant will turn to nuclear in climate gold chase. NTPC aims to add 20 gigawatts to 30 gigawatt nuclear capacity by 2040. Company will examine deploying small scale modular reactors. This is a revolutionary new technology, SMRs. We're going to get into that a little later. UK and US like minded on nuclear power as key to energy security. So you have two of the most powerful countries in the world investing in nuclear. Sweden touts nuclear energy as remedy to Russian dependence. High prices, a dire situation. And so just another country diving in. Belgium considers extending three reactors lifetimes. And then you have this promising news coming from Australia. The nine coalition senators moved to introduce a private senator's bill arguing nuclear power is one of the safest forms of energy and will play a vital role in achieving the nation's emissions targets moving forward. Bill introduced to remove nuclear energy ban in Australia. So it's just happening all around the world. Green voters in France, broadly supportive of nuclear power survey. And so we have growth in public sentiment. We're still in the early stages of the mass adoption of nuclear power. And it's all going to be catalyzed by revolutionary technology like SMRs. So in this article from The Atlantic, they covered the breakthroughs of the years. Pictures of the beginning of the universe, medicine that can kind of reverse death and other leaps of human ingenuity, including small modular technology, which in theory, can make energy inexpensive and sustainable anywhere on the planet. 
it's massive. So let's dive through what is going on on the small modular reactor space. We have another company going public. So we have New Scale Power. They went public, ticker SMR. Well, X Energy to go public via $2 billion blank check deal. So you have capital moving into this space. The CEO of Uranium Energy Corps, Mira Nani, says the best advanced modular reactors rock. So does today's X Energy Nuclear News to go public via $2 billion SPAC deal. 300 advanced reactors expected to be added to U.S. grid over the next 25 years, doubling today's U.S. nuclear output. Talk about a spike in demand made possible by revolutionary technology. This chart shows it best. Current status of nuclear power generation. So nuclear is the second largest source of global low carbon electricity, 442 nuclear power reactors operating, 55 nuclear power reactors under construction, 393 total net installed capacity, 669 projected nuclear capacity by 2050. And then let's point out this chart, which again speaks to how the goalposts keep moving on this space, right? Every time we get a piece of bullish news, the growth trend, the projected future of nuclear power spikes up. And so here we have this adjustment. You can see the projection from 2021 in the dotted light pink line, and then the projected 22 dotted dark pink line, goalposts keep moving. The growth continues higher. And so you can see by like 2030, we are way higher than we are now. And by 2040, we start to get exponential in this space. And on top of that, you have geopolitical pressures on the price of uranium in the short term. EU to propose sanctions on Russia's mining industry. Block aims for ban on investments in one of the country's biggest industries and effort to further cripple economy. So once they put sanctions on Russia and uranium, it's just going to cause the commodity to skyrocket because we get so much from Russia. So we're absolutely staying on that developing story. See if that passes. And then we covered this last week. Tech billionaires are betting big on nuclear power. Nuclear power is back in a big way. Silicon Valley billionaires are betting big on clean energy tech. Between 2015 and 2021, investment in nuclear energy grew around 325% by volume, 3,642% by dollar value. And so we're just getting started. Nuclear power is the future according to everything we're seeing right now.